Good morning, guys. Good morning, internet. Hi, hello. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Uh, the holidays are upon us now. So, yeah, happy holidays for everyone to everyone that's watching this. Um, so, yeah, happy holidays. Hi, my name is EJ and I do narrated art time lapse videos. And here I am again with another one for us to take a look at and of course you know <laughs> learn a thing or two from uh so yeah so with this particular artwork if i'm not wrong i actually made this around um december of last year so uh yeah 12 15. <laughs> that is way too funny i totally forgot which day i made this and it turns out that i made this a year ago exactly so this is just amazing <laughs> what a coincidence that i decided to pick this for today's video honestly guys okay so what i typically do when i do my videos is that i you know just grab a bunch of videos and I edit it and then I do like the voice recording and whatnot. I knew that I picked this for December but I wasn't consciously thinking of making it my December 15 video and I just think that it's uber interesting that it was made in December 15 of 2019 like I just was not planning that at all. <laughs> So now that I'm making my commentary and I saw the date, I'm like, wow, talk about super coincidence. So yeah, okay, now that I'm over the coincident part, uh, yeah, let's talk about this particular artwork. Um, so if I'm not wrong, this was obviously done for the Krita Facebook group. Uh, and there's a private one uh, and there's like a public one. And I think this was the for the private one. And um, back in the day, uh, I don't think they do this anymore. But back in the day, uh, one of the admins for that group, Sonia Bennett, does this weekly prompts. And I'm almost sure that this was one of the weekly prompts uh, back in December of last year. Uh, for a while there, I could not remember if this was for a prompt or if I just wanted to just randomly, randomly draw like a snow scene. Um, cause I was trying to remember what the situation was and yeah, I honestly don't know where <laughs> the prompt came from. Uh, I don't know if it was internal or I, I wasn't sure if I came up with just the random idea of just doing this and then, you know, specifically wanted to pose it for the creator group but i'm almost sure that this was a prompt though or else i would not have named my file k group snow like i do in my file name which is written above creator so yeah this is probably more than likely a creator facebook group anyways what i do remember is that i didn't have a specific um inspiration like visually you know I, I think when i saw the prompt like i think i did a quick google search but i couldn't really come up with a great idea for what snow was and then randomly out of nowhere i just thought of this you know very very simple composition in my head where everything is pretty much just plain white because it's snow and that there would be this one small little climber, you know, just climbing through the snowfield. And so that's how I ended up with this composition. It's a very simple composition. It's nicely done. Um, you could tell like only five minutes has passed. And this is, you know, uh, playing real time instead of uh, speed it up like I normally do. But you can tell that in the first five minutes, everything is pretty much set and done for composition wise. You have your gradient fill that I did for the sky, which is the background, which is what I locked. And then you have this simple, uh, almost triangle shaped to denote the slope of a mountain that the climber is slowly climbing. And so, yeah, it's very, very simple. Um, I made it white, of course, because it's snow and snow is white. And 
it was too wide that I decided to do this one little thing that I'm doing right now, which what I did is um, my random mech brush is set to vary its hue a little bit. Um, and so what I decided to do was to, uh, to introduce a little bit more grays into this white snow. Yeah, just so that it's not too plain white. But in all honesty though, now that I'm like looking at it, um, I still feel like I could have varied up some more, like introduce a lot more grace than, than what I have on here because it's still strikingly too white. <laughs> so yeah. So whether this thing that I did, I mean, this particular thing where I'm smudging all the grace around, um, whether it was effective in trying to knock out just the too white aspect of this mountain i'm not really sure um yeah <laughs> still kind of feels like too white it could just be my monitor just displaying it too white and then thinking it's still too white but either way like my idea was simply to just try and break up the one cue um that was apparent in my build in my snow uh layer so yeah that was the whole point of it. And now that that is done, I am trying to sketch out my climber, which is so small in the little composition. And this is the reason why I love this composition, because, you know, coming up with a really cool 30 minute speed paint is so difficult for me. <laughs> it is so, so difficult. I've been a member of the Facebook daily speed paint group for like, a year now or yeah almost a year I think I'm coming up and I started I started around fall of 2019 I think was when I joined uh, September around September or October could be more like October or November I'm not even sure I can't remember but anyways daily spit paint group in Facebook um they encourage you to do daily spit paints I mean that's what the name is but one of the requirements for the group is that your speed spit paint slash speed paint should be no more than 30 minutes and i do 30 minutes is so tight of a deadline it's so tight like i can't rock it like some of the ones uh in that group um I, I was just looking through that group and like some of the people that's just really phenomenal uh like aaron uh, i can't remember aaron Nakahura, something like that. I can't remember his last name. Karel Hoytiver, Hoytiver, or something. Um, Dominic Mayer. Uh, I think I mentioned all their names before. And uh, my other, my other favorite for the life of me, I cannot remember his name now. Uh, Mikael something. Um, I have to look him up real quick because he's such a favorite. I. I just have to look up who he is uh what was his name again i'm trying to remember uh, ingram ingram shell is so good he is so so good <laughs> Anyways, I'm so sorry, Ingram, I totally forgot you, but yeah, he's, he's really good. Anyways, um, I was talking about the speed painter. So yeah, so the, these speed painters that I mentioned, they're just, uh, really, really good. And Yara Ishet too. I hope, I, I hope I'm pronouncing all these names, Yara Ishet or something. They're so good at coming up with speed paints that looks like complete and finished pictures. Because that's the thing with my speed paints. My speed paints look like they're so incomplete compared to all these people in this group. So to come up with this painting that looks so complete at just being down for 35 minutes, this is rare for me. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm... I don't necessarily think that this is like one of my best paintings ever, but I'm just so happy about the fact that it was done in 35 minutes because I kid you not, this is rare for me. You look through all my speed paints and <laughs> they look so <laughs> incomplete. So yeah, but anyways, 
enough about that. <laughs> I guess we could talk about what's going on with the process. So yeah. Um, obviously, like what I did was that I denoted the shape of the climber by just kind of like quickly sketching him in uh, with a bigger brush. Um, just to kind of, you know, give me an idea of what his pose is like uh, and whatnot. Um, so that's what I did. And then eventually I'm going to zoom in and do a much tighter sketch. Um, just to kind of have uh, an idea of what the character would look like. Um, well, right now... Sorry, I got distracted with what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is I'm blurring the shape of the mountain because uh, it looked too sharp. So I wanted to make it look like it's farther to the distance. So I blurred it slightly just so that it's not, it doesn't read too sharp as a shape uh, and looks more like a mountain. But anyways, after I'm done with this, basically what I'm going to do is that I am going to do a cleaner line sketch to kind of indicate what um the character is doing which obviously we could already read it right now it, 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 he's obviously climbing the mountain is what he's doing and then after i do my line sketch i'm gonna do i'm gonna add a few layers and if i'm not wrong i think those layers that i added are like multiply and color dodge uh the multiply layer kind of just basically accentuate the shadows of the guy and then obviously the color dodge layers it's just to kind of add highlights to this character I'm working on. So basically that's what you'll see me do in the next few minutes. So yeah, let's watch it together.
Okay, so at this point, I'm about to get ready, or I'm about to start smudging uh, the climber. And basically what I do with the smudging technique or what the smudging thing is, I kind of just do this just to blend all the colors together um, that I have come up with, with the base color and the multiply and the color dodge. I and then obviously the the very bottom layer of the snow mountain like i merged them all together and kind of just smudged things around just so that i could get this blended base paint that i would work work on to add the details um you can see me do the whole smudging thing at the with the backpack right now um so yeah this is my typical routine basically um i would start out with a quick you know coloring process where I just lay down some colors just to kind of indicate where things are and then well actually I typically start out with a quick sketch so I either do a quick sketch or kind of delineate what everything is by doing shapes um, marking down some shapes on the canvas or a quick sketch that's how I typically start out and then I put in the colors real quick and the colors you know, or just kind of just random. Um, I have the random make brush set to like different hues. Um, or set to a uh, hue variation setting, right? My random make brush is a hue variation setting just so that it would uh, display just random hues as well as the regular color that I pick. And then I do a multiply layer and a color dodge layer and then when I have all of this down and merge them all together smudge things around like I'm doing now just so that I could have a blended base paint and then of course I start doing my details and my details is pretty much just a three-step process I delineate my edges which means I basically make my edges sharper so that the shape reads clearer and then I accentuate the shadows which means I basically add a little bit more darkening to the shadows if it needs a little bit more darkening and then I add highlights so yeah uh, very simple process that I pretty much come up with uh, it still needs a lot of refinement I've been talking to a lot I've been talking a lot in my videos about how some some of my coloring process needs a little bit more refinement I'm still in an experimental stage trying to come up with like the perfect way of doing my colors um, 
I love how I call her now because they come up with so many crazy hues that work well, like amazingly enough, you know, like uh, there's this one painting I did where the hues, the predominant hues were orange and purple. And I came up with it simply because of the random mech brush having a hue variation setting on it. Um, because I wouldn't have consciously picked orange and purple as my color hues to go with, you know? So basically like the way I color right now is that I specifically introduce kind of like what I call noise, you know? Basically, I just randomly color just so that I can have some form of noise to work with, you know, and the whole idea behind the noise is just so that it could introduce some unique effects that I would not have consciously thought of in the first place, you know, like really cool color combinations such as orange or purple that I've never thought would be a good color combo. Um, but it can get messy and that's what my biggest complaint is is that even though the way i color kind of introduce noise which sometimes the noise is great sometimes the noise is just too noisy it just gets too messy looking and i've gotten a lot of complaints about it well not so much as complaints but comments about it and especially in the sketch zone discord channel that i'm in and again that's sketchzone.net not sketch zone the podcast uh two totally different groups um so yeah i'm still in the refinement stage still trying to come up with like a cool little balance to where i can have some form of color noise when i do my coloring phase but then at the same time have it harmonious and not too messy like i would get sometimes with my coloring process so but in this case, in this particular illustration, I didn't get really too messy, which is a good thing. I mean, the colors are just so simple. It's all white. Um, the sky is blue, so there's like bluish hues. The climber has some bluish hues to him, um, but he's predominantly orange, so he has warm colors. And so, yeah, overall, like the color combination I have in this painting is nice. Um, it's probably not the best combination there is, but it works very well. Um, so yeah, um, I had trouble with the pose of the climber. Um, I wanted him to open up towards the viewer and that's the reason why I kind of had his, uh, left leg forward and his right leg, uh, more backwards so that his body kind of like opens up towards us. What I don't like about his pose though is his arms. Um, the way he is posed right now, um, in order for his pose to be balanced, technically his right arm should be more forward and then his left arm should be backwards. Um, but if I was to draw it that way, then that would not have him open up. It would look like his right arm started like closing him from the viewer. And so that's why I made the conscious decision to have his right arm be back and then his left arm be forward. But it does kind of have, unfortunately, the effect that it looks like he's in balance, <laughs> like he's about to topple over. Um, the good thing, though, is that he's so small in the composition itself that you could barely notice how imbalanced his pose is um so yeah but i mean aside from those critiques uh like the colors well i didn't really critique the color as much because the colors are nice on this one uh but like the imbalanced nature of his pose really i think that's the only critique i have everything else just worked greatly um so yeah, aside from that, I mean, again, like I mentioned, the, this composition worked very well. Um, it's so simple. It's very, very simple. Uh, all the details are contained into this one tiny section in the whole composition. And the rest of the composition was really, really simple. So I am immensely happy about how simple this was. Um, you can see like the way I'm painting this right now is very, very relaxed. Typically when I paint, I'm like uber fast and I'm, I go real quick, but 
And you can see that I'm really being careful with some of my strokes and just being uh, slow and deliberate about it. Simply because I know that it was going to be a fast illustration, you know. I think I might have originally budgeted like an hour for me to do my work. So it was just very, very surprising that I ended up doing it just for 35 minutes. Um, so yeah, again, it's one of my more successful speed paints just because my speed paints are typically so messy and they look so incomplete. And this one just looks complete from the get go. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy about the idea too. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not really sure where my idea came from. Um, I, I'm not sure where the idea of a climber, uh, climbing through snow came from. Cause I can't really remember if a uh, Google image search inspired me or not, you know, but either way, wherever the idea came from, I'm glad that it came, that. I ended up with the idea because it's such a simple execution for an illustration, you know, kind of like what I said earlier. It was just so simple, so fastly done just because of its simplicity. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, this illustration is pretty much almost complete. I'm just kind of just marking my edges some more uh, with those two poles that the climber has I'm just making it read a little bit better which even from afar you can't really read it all that much because they're so small and then adding highlights to his bill and then I ended up drawing his face I think it's one of the last things that I did um, well I mean I drew his face already but adding the details on his face which is the eyes and the mouth so yeah such a simple illustration. I'm really glad of the way things worked out with this one. Really cool. So yeah. And here's the face with the eyes and the mouth. Wish you could barely see from afar. But works so nicely. So so yeah uh this is it for this illustration um the holidays are upon us so i just want to say happy holidays um in case i don't post any more videos i uh, kind of have a tentative plan to post some more videos i don't know if i'm going to be able to execute it or not um if i don't get to execute or if i don't get to post any more videos uh, for 2020 then i just want to say happy holidays happy new year and uh, I will catch you guys next year, but if I do end up posting some more videos, which I'm hoping I could, then hey, <laughs> watch out for those. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this with me. I'll catch you guys in the next videos. Happy holidays. Good night.